Sunny Side Up with Adam and Kim only on CJLO 1690 AM. And the Americans may have lost the hockey goal to Canada this week, but they aren't the only ones losing. President Obama actually made a bet to Prime Minister Stephen Harper about who would win the game, and obviously the Canadians won. So now the president will have to buy the Prime Minister $42, a $42 case of Canada beer, so most, most in dry. What do you think about that? And was he just going to, like, FedEx it over? Or I don't <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was a little silly. I was a little surprised when you told me this morning. And the press secretary for the United States, Robert Gibbs, will actually have to wear a Team Canada jersey at his next press conference, <laughs> which is really interesting as well. But I'm thinking all this media attention that, uh, oh, you know, they won the game, nah, 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 the medals on it, the front page, kind of distracts from the big issues. Which are? Wh- what do you mean, which are? First of all, the U.S. is fighting two wars. Okay, no, but One I second, mean... and... <laughs> They're trying to reform their healthcare system. And Kim was making fun of me for this before, but I'll say it again. <laughs> Gays in the military, it hasn't been repealed yet. The law, don't ask, don't tell. The Canadian Parliament is returning to Parliament Hill this week. Um, have we forgotten about the abuse of Afghan detainees, the big scandal there? What about our struggling economy that we're trying to fix? You know, the uh, speech from the thrones being delivered this week. No one's focusing on that. And uh, what about the repatriation of o- Omar Khadr, the only guy, the only Canadian left in Guantanamo Bay, no one cares that he's being tortured over there and being interrogated by CSIS, you know, being treated cruelly. But, you know, we won some gold, so... Yes, but see, just because, yes, all those things are still going on and they are very important issues that we are going to deal with, but just because those are happening doesn't mean we can't celebrate, you know, we can't give the front cover to, yes, the fact that we won a lot of gold medals and that we did win this game. Buying a case of beer for Harper is a little, a little silly. But do you think it's taking away from the big issue that we're focusing on? Oh, look, he's buying a case of beer, but no one's talking about these issues. No, because this is just this is just one day. It's just one thing. It's but one it's not little just story. one day because if you gonna... look at the coverage during the Olympics, the medals took up three quarters of the page. You know, it's like gold. We won gold, mm-hmm. and you know, great that we won gold. But does it really mean anything? Two months from now, will it really mean anything? Well, for those athletes, it will. <laughs> I actually think that the Olympics are a big waste of time. I mean, we, first of all, we wasted tons of money. The yeah. Canadian government and Vancou- the city of Vancouver. Mm-hmm. I mean, great that we showed our country to the world. First of all, we effed up really big when we had that guy die before the Olympics. Mm-hmm. That was a big, big mess up. Well, yeah. That I'm actually... No, no, no. But that was something... They made a slide that was too hard to go down. They made a ramp that was that they knew would be difficult, too difficult. They wanted to create the most difficult ramp. And in the process, they ended up killing someone. So Canada effed up there, big time. And so much money was spent on these games. When you look at our economy, sure, people came and they bought the stupid mittens that we made with the Olympic (laughs) rings and the Canadian maple leaf. But is that really stimulating our economy as much as how much the games actually cost us to produce? Not so much. I don't think a mitten's going to save our, our economy. No, but the the Olympics are a tradition that we've had, so we're still going to celebrate them. We're still going to have them, regardless of what's going on in the economy or the world or you know the, the war in Afghanistan and Iraq. As a society, we're just so attracted by the shiny object that's the gold medal. <laughs> it's like, oh, we need the gold. And there was you know all that talk of, what was that stupid, uh, owning the podium? Mm-hmm. You know, there are more important things than owning the damn podium. Well, of course, but I mean, we can't focus. If and then, if we were focusing on uh, on Harper twenty four seven, you'd be like, okay, enough, enough. We have to focus on the other things. This is just a little sidetrack. It's yes, a little fluff, but you know. But it was fluff for two straight weeks, and I did not watch. I watched like two Olympic events here. I watched like a hockey game, two hockey games, and some curling. Yeah. In passing, the curling. Well, exactly. So, I mean, you have the choice not to watch it. You have the choice to watch something else. I mean, did you not find it so compelling that it was, like, taking up your life? Like, people were making the biggest deal about the Olympics. Like, the Olympics are my life during these two weeks. People would not leave their television set. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not that hardcore uh, Olympic fan, but I don't know. I just say move on and find the big issue. The Olympics are over, finally. Well, exactly. So now now we're going to focus on, on the harder stuff. On the harder stuff. According to 60 Minutes, among the biggest jerks in America, Tiger Woods is one <laughs> of the least likely to get a mulligan for his bad behavior. A what now? 
basically the important things that we're talking about. We're going to talk about them right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tiger Woods is a man that most people would forgive. 22% of respondents to this 60-minute survey said that they would forgive Tiger Woods for playing around on his wife. M- and men in this survey were twice as likely to forgive him than women. So Shocking. He, yeah. T- <laughs> And less people were likely to forgive Chris Brown for that incident with Rihanna or Robin Polanski for um, raping that girl. Mm-hmm. It's not alleged. It's, it happened. And uh, Charlie Sheen for uh, domestic abuse with his wife. People were most likely to forgive Tiger Woods. Which, which leads to the question, do you forgive a man who's cheated on you, Kim? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, well, I think that they, they're, they're more likely to forgive Tiger because, like, Roman Polanski rape that girl and chris brown abused so i think it, it's just a lesser sin or, you know adultery but the interesting fact is that men were more likely to forgive tiger than women i don't think it's interesting i think that's obvious is it obvious yeah guys just back each other up like yeah it's no big deal maybe i'm not the typical person to speak to but i think the tiger should be punished by his wife i first of all if i were tiger's wife i'd leave him like that. I'd take half the money, say, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'd l- give him a bit of, like, public humiliation. <laughs> or I'd go on the Today Show and just, like, talk it all out. <laughs> Wouldn't you? If you were Tiger's wife, what would you do? I, I think I would leave him. I, I, mean, I never never say never. Like, I've never been in that situation. Hopefully, I won't ever be with a cheating spouse. But I don't know. I, I would find it very hard to, to trust him again. And, and he looks so pained. <laughs> <laughs> and no, I agree. He he should be punished. And did you watch his public apology? I didn't buy a word of it. And it, what? It took you three months to write that speech. Someone else put a bunch of words in your mouth. It didn't look, ugh. It didn't look authentic at oh, all. Oh right, you weren't here when that happened because we were talking about that last week. I, apolo- I think the apology was a good idea. I yeah, think but it, it took him. It took him so long, and he was just he was. I didn't buy it. My mom's like, well, you have to give him a second chance, and you know people deserve second chances, and I agree with that. But I just. I don't think he was sorry. Because you know what? He wouldn't be apologizing if he wasn't caught. Okay? For, first That's of all, the bottom line. which second chance are you giving him a second chance for? Is it with the first one or the second one or the 14th No, just, girl? just the fact that like he, he made a mistake or mistakes. He plural, made like over 14 mistakes. But just saying that like, you know, everyone deserves a second chance. And I think they do. Just But he wouldn't be apologizing if he wasn't caught. He had never been found out. He would probably be with mistress number 47 right now. You know? Actually, this is another thing that we were talking about last week. Is sex rehab real? Because if it's really an addiction, you can't stop yourself, right? You're addicted to it. Mm-hmm. So maybe he was addicted to having an affair yeah. or having affairs. Is I don't that, know. Do you, do you think that's then a legit addiction? No. <laughs> <laughs> the Price is Right. <laughs> um, yes, TMZ is reporting that former Price is Right model Brandy Cochran is blaming her miscarriage on the show. In 2007, she was afraid of losing her job because she was pregnant. And so she says that the stress that was caused by all this caused her to lose her baby. And then in late 2008, she became pregnant again. And then another producer, once she was walking down the hallway and he's like, wide load coming through. And she is just outraged. And she's been on the show since 2002. And then just last week when her maternity leave was up, she was fired. So she is filing suit against the show's producers, claiming that she was discriminated against, harassed, and retaliated against after gaining weight during her pregnancy. Are women only worth employing if they can avoid getting pregnant? Well, you know what? I think that's been the age-long debate for the longest time, right? People have been discussing this since women got into the workforce. But even more so when you're a, you know, a model on TV, right? Well, I mean, it's part of the job description to be skinny. I'm sure in her contract it must be, you know, skinny, blonde... And you know what, I think she's getting more publicity out of this than anything she would have done with The Price is Right. So, you know, in a way, good for her, but I don't understand this this harassment. Because when does a joke go too far? That's what the... Then, right there. (laughs) With the wide load? Yeah, I don't think that's called for at all. But if I, if you were pregnant, would, did they say that while she was pregnant or <laughs> Yeah, after? While, while she was pregnant and she was... If you were walking in the hallway and I said wide load coming through, would you be like, that's harassment? Me and you right now, this is our relationship. Yes, you harass me all the time. You would sue me for <laughs> <laughs> No, but I'm honest now. Would you be offended by that if I said wide load coming through and I know you pretty well? I mean, I don't think I'd feel very good about it, right? If you said that to me, but then at the same time, we're, we're friends, we're comrades, we're colleagues. That is her her superior that's her boss there's no place for that in the workplace well i mean it's it's so hard to say because at one point it's humor and then at one point it's harassment yeah and that's a fine line i walk every single day <laughs> god <laughs>